let's get started demo first of role based authentication and authorization in dotnet blazor web assembly and firebase so here i'll just logged in with the user user roles and it is only available only just user roles right that user can only just attempt that questions and attempt can quiz answers but in if you click on this guy so this guy only access with the admin user not user role so that that we will do check it with the logout once i log out so let me log out and let me log in with this admin user so admin user so what is my username and password let me put it over here and sign in so once you sign in now i am logged in with this admin user which have that admin users so admin can access that you know manage that question and you know add that new questions and edit that questions and all so like that for example once i click that edit now see user can edit that options but uh, also user this admin user can do anything right so that's why he can able to see all other uh access as well so this will be implemented implementation in this uh, in this sessions right so how we can you know authenticate an authorization based based on the role based uh, authentication with using firebase so let's get start the implementations so before implementation i'm especially recommend if you first time visit my channel so go to my channel which is dot net real world example and here uh the last session actually we have to covered in this we have just created this quiz app with using the firebase db so i'm especially recommend please go to this one because this is that you can get started okay how we can use our firebase db in our blazor web assembly or blazor basm uh, applications easily right so that's a start and apart from that also you can just go to you know my other session as well where i just covered you know how we can use that uh, you know user management system uh with using dotnet mayu also you know blazor uh, hybrid application so many many other stuff also we have covered within our uh dotnet with the firebase so you can just go through other section as well so let's just start so i i am just taking same example which i covered the last session so this is my same example which i already have available in my github link so you can just go to and check out from there so let me quickly open this application and just start it to implementation now my application got opened and here it is very simple structure of that blazor web assembly i'm not doing any clean architecture and all but if you interested you can go to my channel you can definitely will get that clean architecture as well so you can just use that clean architecture as well but here it is very simple nothing as a special over here so what i need to do for you know start that implementation so first i have to just check it okay what is that exactly uh, exact on a feature over here so let me try to run it and see what we have as of now now my application got running over here and if you just click see this is that quiz application which is only just in memory object so there is a no database means no their firebase db so this is just sample demo perspective but here this is actually for that you know coming from database from that firebase database so here we can attempt and we can just you know use that firebase db and get that all the records and we can store that result and all so everything we can check it and also there's a question list so as of now see everybody can just you know uh, just use this question list because we can manage it right so where we can manage that questions like how we can add new question how we can edit that questions how we can delete that questions right so that as of now there is no authentication and authorization so everybody can do anything right so that we have to restriction and we have to do prevent that user so that's why we have to implement that authentication and authorization of role with uh, with using firebase so close that and let's just start so first what i need to do so first i have to just create a custom uh, authentication uh, folder so where i can just implement all our logic so first i just need to create a new folder so folder name i can just use it a uh, custom auth right and in this custom auth first i have to just create you know one interface so that i can use that that all that implementation in another place so right click on that and this folder create a new class and choose the interface and choose it that name i account management edit 
so now this is my you know i account management right so here i have to just declare all that method so i have to just declare a few method for example so i have to require you know few uh declaration method over here so first of all i have to require the register method right so this is just a register method let me just bring to new line so that you are able to see see i've just created a register because i want user can just register their user on right and also another method would be that logged in like user can able to log in right and then also that another declaration method would be a logout right so user simply can just log out and that another method that we have to required that is now check authenticated so here this method will be authenticated okay this user whatever particular user that logged in user or before logged in that we can check it okay this user has uh authenticate or not so that we have to check in this method so now we have to create you know this you know this model so that whatever response we can store over here so let me quickly create a create a class and a model class over here add a new class and we can prepare our that response model so from result over here and this from result we just simply return two things over here one is that you know succeed if it is success to true if it is false so that means if it is equals false so it will return false and also that error levels whatever that error and all we can store over here then go back and just bring back to that namespace and that's it right so now this four method we have to implement and we can this using this four method we have to just you know authentication authorization we have to complete it right so that is done now account management has been done now what i need to do i have to just create a implementation of that right so for that implementation what i can do i have to just create a you know concrete class for that so right click on that over here and create a new class and make it that name whatever name you want but yeah i just suggested over here as a custom authentication state provider because i am using that custom authentic uh, authentication state provider so that's why i'm just using this custom authentication and here i have to simply uh, require that authentication state provider right so for that i have to just using this uh, authentication state provider class and this actually we have to bring that namespace right so we have to just install this namespace so this is that namespace which we have to require this guy so microsoft asp.net component authorization so i have to just install this package so simply you can just install directly over here and also yeah you can just simply directly over here so find that and install that so it, it will automatically find it and install it so now it's got installed and before that you have to just check it okay what version actually they have installed so as of now they install whatever that current version right so this is perfectly fine because we have to make sure whatever it your framework we are trying to use so as of now i'm just using you know webassembly.net 8 so all that you know compatibility uh, or about that compatibility we have to use that dotnet 8 version so that's why we have to make sure okay so once you done what i need to do for next next i have to just you know inherit that whatever actually that class be whatever that in, in interface i have to create it right so that interface like for example i account management we have to just create it right so all that implementation uh, we have to done over here so that's why we just inherit that okay let me bring that so that you can able to see easily okay so what you need to do first first actually we have to uh, uh, we have to generate you know custom authentication state provider you know method right so that we have to just create it for that how we can use it like override and you can just use that yeah this guy get authentication state provider so this is one thing now see now error has been gone over here but now this error is still is pending because there's a many implementation over here so that we have to just implement because there's a signature method over there right so let me just quickly add it all that you know default implementation so here all the default implementation for that login logout and registered and also get authentication state provider right so that is done now we have to uh, you know uh, 
we have to implement one by one so first i have to just implement you know this guy you know get authentication state provider so let me start for that so for for that we have to just declare few method means few view property over here so first i have to required that authenticated uh, property so let me just create first authenticated property so by default it should be a false then i have to just create an a claim so claim principle i have to just declare also so now we have to just create an unauthenticated uh, claim principle right and then we have to require a uh, few other things also so that we will declare in later but yeah as of now it is fine now go to uh, go to that method where is our method yeah this is that method so now we have to start implementation so first i have to just set it by default once i come into this method so by default authenticated will be false right and once it falls now we have to set our user so that user is not authenticated right so that we have to set okay by default it is not authenticated so that also we have to set on the initial level then we have to just try you know use the try catch because i have to do some logic over here so if it is fail anything and all so we can just you know capture in this here we can put that log and all and we can do did something over there right so like that actually we have to do the try catch and inside the try catch now we have to uh, require that uh, uh, that token right because see this method every time is called this method while authenticated right so that time every time actually be uh, idea actually what is the idea so once i logged in so once i logged in so whatever logged in user get the token i have to keep it in our local storage so once i keep the local storage so that token i have to get it from that local storage and further i have to use an authenticate based on this token okay this token is valid or not and this token has a claims and all so everything has to be able to do that so that's why we have to first actually we have to just implement that uh, login mechanism so that you can understand okay why i'm using that you know token and all right so that's why let me just move it to next implementation is a logged in user so let me just start to logged in user first implement that login user because that is a dependent on that one so that's why i have to just use it so for that logged in user i have to request you know firebase auth client so as of now see there's a no firebase auth client so let me just import it or just inject it that firebase auth client so that i can use their method and all so basically we are using over here uh you know firebase auth right so that firebase auth we have to uh, one client over there so let me just create a constructor of that particular class so this is just create a constructor and just injected that's firebase client and for this firebase client again we have to require actually uh that name space or that package right so what is that package we have to require so go to that uh, application right click on that and go to that new get package where is that new get package here is the new get package and we have to just look for firebase authentication right so look for that firebase authentication and we look for that firebase authentication dot net and just install whatever latest version so let me quickly install that guy so now once installed now go back and go back over here and now see now i'm able to see this firebase auth namespace and just bring back that firebase namespace and just use the declare that uh, no, variable and just create an assign as a as a private property right so this is that private property just we have to just declare and assign to this property so that i can use this private property in our method so go back to again that login method here and in this login method we have to call one of the login method sign in method over here using that okay so first what i need to do i am using await using that firebase client and in this firebase client we have a sign in with this email and password so based on this see based on this email and password they will just returning back and i user credentials right so let me quickly store as a user credential as a where result as a storing as a result over here and also just bring back to that new line so that you can easily see that what actually we are trying to do 
okay so now once i get over here what i need to do i just simply check it like whatever that you know that result have a that user right so if that whatever uuid is not equal to null right so that means it is logged in successful right so if it is logged in successful then what i need to do i have to set uh, that information right whatever that information now see user if you see over here that user have many things like for example user have a credentials so in this credentials we have a token so what i need to do i have to just store this complete credential information in our local storage so again i have to do another package we have to require for that uh local storage so what is that name that is name again go back to here i have to add another package so go to over here and close that and look for that blazer blazer local storage right so this is that package which we have to use so that i can in i can i can store uh, whatever information in our local storage right so let me quickly install that apply that so once you've done now go back go back to your application uh, in this login method and here i have to just uh, now store whatever that you know credentials information we have to just store over here so how we can do that it's very simple again uh, just simple okay now i have to just inject this local services right so let me go up and go to that you know constructor and in this constructor let me bring back to new line and here i have to just you know inject that you know blazard you know i local local storage service so this is that i local storage and using that again we have to just create a new private property and assign to over here so that i can use it now see my local storage is got ready to use now go back to over here now my local storage there is a set method where i can just set that information now see i just pass it the key so this is my key and this is that complete information which i want to store it so in this user auth we have to storing all that credentials information like token and expiry date and all or refresh token everything actually is stored in this credential so that i will store in our here and this one i have to use in here so that's why i just trying to complete first this login method so that you can easily understand right so yeah so now once it's done now what i need to do i have to just call you know notification state change so that once i logged in so that notification state got will change and call it to that get authentication service now see this authentication service will call using that notification change. again they will check okay that after logged in this is that you know authenticated user or not or uh, this have a proper email you know claims and all or whatever the requirement that is a meet or not if it is not meet so that means it is unauthenticated if it is a meet so that means it is authenticated so that's why i just call into that guy and once it's done now simply returning back so it is success because this is a return type right over there this login method and it is written as a success if it is fail or something as a issue so what i can do in this end after you know catch so yeah also i, I miss something so over here i have to just using as a try catch right in this try catch i have to just keep it all that um, logic so that if any exception and all right so we can easily uh, catch it over here and we can uh, tell okay this is that uh, you know this is that you uh, know this is that error and all right so simply i can use it that like that so what i can do in here i simply i am to return that okay yeah so this is fall because if something has an error if it is success so that definitely it will return from here if it is not definitely it will come to exception and all or simply it is false and whatever that information you can get it from that exception you can keep it over here but otherwise you can just as an uh an agentic message we can tell to user right so that's why we have to do okay so now see login method is completely done so once you log in done now go back to your you know get authentication state provider now we have to just store uh, start to implementation of that which we have to pending so first what i can do whatever just i just keep it uh 
local storage right so that i have to just get it from there right so like that again we have to use that local storage right which is i just injected and we have to get item and whatever that type like right which we have to returning so this is that key right which is coming from that in a local storage but we have to just deserialize as per that our type right so what i can do why i have to do i have to just create this credential so that whatever that user information we have to keep it that be able to map it over here and further i can use it over here so i just simply have to create this credentials uh, model so right click on that model go to that new class and create it to new model of that credentials and in this credentials what are the properties we required it's simply we have to record few properties for example this like they, they that have a id uh, you know id token refresh token one is created once is expire and what is that provider type so those information we have to get it from that you know in this credentials uh from that local storage which will get it over here and once it get it now further i have to just call you know http client so once i get the token right so then definitely i have to call one of that uh, service where i can get that all that user information because that based on the user token i can get that user information okay what is that user complete information like it is have a what are the claims and what is the information and all so for that actually we have to do we have to inject you know one http client because i have a one you know rest api which is provide that you know a firebase auth so using that firebase auth rest api i have to call that rest api and i can get that information of that user information based on that token right so for that again what i can do i have to just inject it, uh, that http client over here so let me quickly just using http client over here and create a new private property and assign to over here and then go down over here now I have to call that uh, http client over here so await let me create await http client http client dot post there is a post api method over here and in this post api method actually we have to get that uri so where is my uri so i already if you okay so now if you go to my over here see this is one of the session uh this is one of the session firebase rest api so if you don't aware that okay how we can use that firebase rest api so you can go to my this session you will get that idea okay how we can use that complete user management firebase auth rest api so i already covered i'm not going to do that but yeah i'll just show you open that postman how we can use it that guy so let me quickly open that postman and uh, yeah my postman got opened over here so this is my postman and over here see this is my uh, post request right and in this post request this is my uri along with this uh, you know key like this is key i already explained how we can get that key but i'm not going to again so this key required and this is that uri so combine of this uri we require this complete uri so copy this uri and go back to your over here and pass it over here so there's a two way actually so ideally this is not a right way directly we can pass it over here but yeah you can just storing this information from your, your configuration file and you can get it from here but yeah as of now demonstration perspective i'll just showing over here as a directly and what is that another uh, parameter we have to record over here in this post this is content like what is the request body so if you go again back in this request body now see request body we have to pass that id token using with this token id right so that token we have get it from that in our local storage and this is we have to rephrase over there so for that what i can do simply i have to just create a, a new string contain over there so let me quickly create a new string content and let me 
uh, new line over here so that you can able to see okay so now see i just simply create a string content and i using that in you know, a string uh, json string i prepare as json string id token and whatever where i can get the id token i am getting from that id token from here from that local storage and adding over here and just i'm using that encoding utf is an application json type right and this body simply have to just pass it to over here that's it so this is that complete http client request right and once i get it i definitely i will get uh, that response so let me quickly store as a response over here so this is my response i'm just getting over here so let me bring back to new line so that you can easily see right so now see i just getting that response from that user response and once i get that user response i can check it over here okay if it is succeed right user response is ensured the success code so that is fine if it is not so definitely it will return somewhere else you can just put it some logic over here as well so that's fine but once you get what i can do i have to just read that whatever that in return whatever that response actually we are getting from this api right so that we have to just getting from like that okay that user response contain read all that string from here so i'm getting that user json over here right? and once i get that response i have to just deserialize that to our uh information right whatever that user information so that i have to just deserialize so how we can do that it is very simple again just bring back to new line so i'm just using that deserialize json text json so deserialize and here i just passing that you know uh here actually i want to deserialize whatever that user json we are getting from here right so that we have to deserialize over here or we can store that over here so let me quickly just create a method where i can just get all that information right so let me create this as like in a model so go to that model over here and right click on that create a new class and click that model user information and in this user information i have to just create uh, user details because it is returning as an array of that user so what i can do i have to just create another user and user has a local id email id display name and this is a this is main thing actually custom attribute so this is actually claims or you can say that whatever roles we have to add it so those are roles actually we have to get it from here so that's why we have to just prepare this method right miss this class and we have to just call it to in this user method over here so that it, because it is returning as a user array right so that's why just prepare as a user array now go back to over here now we are good to go to get that all that deserialize that you know whatever the user json we can deserialize and we can get it over here and also we can just prepare our json serialization options that we can do as a additionally so let me and the go to top and here i can just you know setting or i just i just create an the deserialization method over here like whatever that you know, just realize it should be a camel case only right so that's we have to just prepare as some um, options setting options over here and save it and go down now we are good to go to uh, clear that all the errors right now what i need to do now we have to work now we get that all that user information over here right so first we have to check it okay if user information it is not equal to null right so if it is not equal to null then we have to set some claims over here so let me quickly add whatever that claims over here we required so that we have to create it over here now see i just simply create a new claims and these two claims i've just added over here like first is a name claims that is email and another is a email so that is also emails but yeah whatever we require as per requirement we can just adding our claims over here right so that's we have to add it a claims and once you're done so now this is a normal claims like this is authentication now authorization part is pending now because whatever just you know uh, if you go back to in this user right so in this user so in this user i have to uh this custom attribute right so which have you know our roles so that roles we have to get it and we have to add that roles claim as well so that roles claim if i trying to get so what i can do 
simply first i have to just you know uh, inside this here let me create a uh, one deserialized method over here which will deserialize whatever that in our you know string right so this is my string custom attribute it is returning an a string so as of now definitely it's little confused because you don't know like how look like a data but yeah, i'll show you once i just come implement so i'll show you how our data is coming so that's why we are using this guy so we will returning as a uh, string data over here or i can show you from here no as of now we don't have other response but i'll show you in later part yeah so simply we are trying to deserialize with this in a dictionary and this has a string and you know key as a string and value is a bool right which is a true false so we are getting as a settings over here right and let me try to without any issue okay now see you are able to see and then here if it's settings right so whatever settings now we have to just some filter over here so what is my filter filter would be like this right so see this is settings whatever setting we are getting as a dictionary we put that condition okay so whatever value it if it is only true right because might be might be there is a could be you know some uh, property which have an uh, I, I you know is admin is true but is user is false right so only just true value we can filter over here and then we have to just select whatever keys we have to select it and also we have to map it why we have to map it because see our data is coming from like that is admin is user is mod moderate or is uh, you know administrators something like so that we have to map it okay if it is is admin so we have to convert it to is admin to only admin is user so only convert it to is user so like that actually we have to do that which i already done in our you know some of the session you can just check out but yeah for that what i can do simply i have to just create another dictionary so go to here on the top and simply i just create a dictionary over here as a key map now see is key map what i am trying to map is admin is a admin is user so user is hr so hr is account to only account right so like that we have to map it over here it's simply and also let me bring back so we have to map now it is returning that all the collections and once i get the collections i have to just adding that roles using that collection so there is a two way or uh, there's a many way actually not two way so you can just simply using that for each loop or just simply using that link you query you can just get that whatever settings and iterate one by one and add it in this roles now see i'm just simply adding as a roles whatever how many roles in this particular user i am just trying to adding in this as a roles so this is actually completely done for that adding that you know authentication and authorization and once it's done what i can do simply have to set a claim identity so this is that how this is the way actually we can set the claim identity so use that new claim identity and whatever the claims we have to storing right so all that claims we have to storing we have to pass it over here and whatever the name actually this particular claim identity so that we have to pass it over here so this is that particular class name we have to pass it over here and once we add it so whatever that user right so which we have to declare on the top that user we have to just assign again that user and using that new claim principle whatever the new id we have to add it over there and simply uh, in authenticated it should be true right so this is done actually that implementation and once it's done now if it is throw exception that is fine if it is any exception and all so definitely we have to throw like okay return state whatever that current state so see if it is completely fine so it will return this state right and if it is uh it is having an issue so definitely it will return only unauthenticated state right so that is way actually we have to just implement so this is a very important part to you know learn to authentication and authorization in blazor application or any dotnet application like you know I think this is this is for that all that dot net you know mbc and uh, blazor application so this will work for every player so yeah uh, that's way actually you can just do that so once it's done now that get authentication is done login also is done now logout pending and register pending right so register one i will do in a later but i'll just 
try to log in and just complete to log out as well okay so let me start to log out as well so let me log out so how we can log out it's very simple again so whatever that uh you know uh storing is a local storage that we have to remove again right so see again we have to using that await local service remove that remove item as a method which is available in this local storage and using that key so that i can remove that from here and once it's done what i can do i have to whatever that firebase auth client right so if you go to up and down see firebase auth client so once you logged in so definitely this logged in user we have all that user information as well so that we can check it okay if it is only logged in user so then we have to just prepare to log out from that you know firebase auth client right so see that firebase it is not null level or then user has the not null so then we have to try to sign out method inside that firebase client right which is that we have to inject it over here right so that is way we can sign out and then once you sign out we simply uh, call it to that a notification change state method and pass it to that uh, get authentication method right so this is that way so like this way it is done also this is also pending get authentication uh, authentication method this is also pending so let me quickly get authentication uh, complete because it is nothing but it is just calling this method like await and call this method because we in this method only we can check it okay it is authenticated or not if it is authenticated i can simply return whatever that you know authenticated because we have to set is a globally and this is setting over inside this method so that's we can just simply okay it is authenticated or not so we can check it over here so yeah so now all that method is completed rest accept this register so let me quickly complete this one also because i don't come back again to implementation all that method right so that's why i just have to complete this register method also so for register method what i need to do first i just simply add i know one error message over here like okay so this is that you know, generic error method default error message like prevent registration from that seeding right whatever error message is generic one you can just put it over here and then try to try to try catch and remove this guy and you can put your logic over here and here again as like uh login method we have to use this guy right so we have to use this guy again and use that register method so use this guy dot create and yeah create user with the email and password so using that user and password whatever that user email so passing that user email and then it is a password so what is my password just password and then the third one is a display name so username is a display name make sure you are you just put that correct uh correct uh, now correct options means correct parameter you passing that all the way because sometime actually i just miss it like uh, email is fine but password and display name i just reverse back so that's why it's i'm many times actually i just uh get that issue so once i done what i can do simply i can just use that async cover method and once i get it over here i can store as a whatever that information we are trying to get it over here response so that i can get it because this is returning as a credentials so this is user credential we are returning and once i returning back so i simply i can based on this i can just okay so let me bring back this method as a new line and uh, so return so if it is successful this it is successful created so return true if it is not then simply again we have to just false over here along with the default result or or you can just get it whatever exception over here you can just keep it over here so now all that implementation done for um, here like login done logout done register done so all these things is done right so now we are good to go to implement our component so go back to over here now go back to your component so where is my component so as of now this is page and in this page uh we don't have as a login component right so that login component we have to just create a login and register component 
so we have to just create it so i already have uh i already we have a design so i'm not going to design again so what i can do simply i have to just create a new folder and in this folder let me create an account and in this account first i have to just create a login method a login component so right click on that create a reset component and create a login component so login dot razor right this is that login component first of all i just adding over here as a see login right as a, a route page route so based on the page route i just adding as a route login and here i just have to uh put some i have to just call that service right whatever service i just prepare so what is my service my service is this i account management right so that i have to just call it over here is that over here so let me call it this two service because we two service we required for example as a navigation manager and account manager so account manager definitely be up to bring back that name space so this name space i have to just keep it from that global place so that i don't need to declare again and again so every every component so i keep it over here and then we are good to go to call uh, our service over here so let me create a uh, one method so before creating a one method i have to just pre record you know few few property so these three property we have to record first is the spinal class second one is a you know, sign-in model and third one is a you know, uh, error list right so as of now we don't have a sign-in model so let me quickly create a sign-in model as well right click go to here go to here and create a sign-in model and in the sign-in model whatever property we have to record we have to record two two property and this two property is like that okay email and password which we are trying to accept from that user so now we are getting from there and once you're done now we have to prepare on one method that is called something yeah do login right so that do login in this do login what i need to do simply first i have to just set a class so this is my you know bootstrap class over here and uh, here just boot class or whatever class you have to prepare that you can just keep it over here as well so but yeah i'm using that bootstrap class and then what is done now i have to use that await await and then using that act because i just using the at and then login method right so this is my login method and in this login method whatever that you know uh, sign in model so this sign in model has a that username and password so that we have to use it like email and this as a password so these two things we have to pass it over here and once you pass it definitely we have to get that response we have to key spot over here response and based on that response i can just uh, just keep it like okay if it is succeed so uh, now go to that and you know, base url right or if it is just fail or just if you succeed so you can just you know go to that word particular you know page like if it is start the quiz or something else you can do that but as of now i just keep it to main directory and if it is fail so definitely we have to remove this guy and show the error list right so this is login done and once you login done what i can do i can show you actually that login part first so this is login but yeah we have to keep it registered as well and also we have to record logout so let me quickly uh yeah i think first we have to check it okay it is how is it is working it is working or not so let me show you first so once you log in now we can start our application right so before that i have to do something else also so if you're using this custom authentication provider we have to change something in our here in this route uh you know app dot razor file as well so what need to change over here so let me uh let me just quickly comment this line or just just remove this guy right and then freshly uh we have to just change it actually we have to just change something uh, something minimal right so what i can do simple just remove this guy and just coming these things because because just we have to just wrap it that custom this thing actually we have to wrap whatever that router 
है ना एप डॉट रिजर्व फाइल एज अ राउटर पेज सो बी एफ टू जस्ट कैश कैडिंग ऑथेंटिकेशन स्टेट प्रोवाइड है बी एफ टू ब्रिंग बैक दिस गाय एंड वट एवर दैट नेम स्पेस वी हैव टू जस्ट कीप इट इन अवर मेन प्लेस राइट मीज अ ग्लोबल प्लेस एंड वॉन्स इट डन रिमूव दिस गाय राइट सो सी जस्ट सिंपली बी एफ टू जस्ट कैश कैडिंग एंड दिस इज सेम देर इज अ नो चेंज राइट and this is also not change right only change over here the previously we have here the route view so instead of route view we have to change author authorized route view so only just authorized route view we have to go to over here if it is not is not found so definitely we have to return back to over here whatever message or redirect to somewhere else so that we can do over here so this change you have to do that so once you done so now we have to register something like see i have to use this you know this client means this interface this uh these things and also we have used that some firewall auth client also right so those are things we have to register so go to that program.cs file and here we have to register those things right so as like before uh we have to register see we have to register firebase client similar we have to register firebase auth client and as well as this you know as authentication provider and all these are things we have to register neither it will complaining okay it is dependencies issues right so first i have to just register this guy like uh, firebase auth client so let me quickly builder i already actually explained in our blazor hybrid app but yeah, again i'm just explaining over here services dot add singleton and in this add singleton what i can do as like before we have done so new firebase auth client right firebase auth client so this is that firebase auth client so in this firebase auth client see is expecting firebase auth configuration so new firebase auth config firebase auth config in this firebase auth config we have to uh, pass some configuration things over here so what are the configurations so first is configuration is api key where did you get i'll show you a little bit later but yeah this is one things now second things is required over here at author domain this is also we have to record and the third things we have to record the providers so the providers what is the provider we are trying to use we have to provider we are using as a email providers so that we have to use it so that we have to decorate directly like this way like email providers right so now where i can get this api key and all so for this you have to go to that console firebase logged in console firebase google.com you have to go to that console firebase google.com go to here go to that whatever that your logged in uh user so just logged in and just create a if you you don't have a application so just create a new as a, i already explained but i'm not doing to again so just create it once you create it click on that project whatever your project so go to that project and go to that range settings click on the project settings and this project settings you will get over here see this is that api key so you can just simply call this api key from here go back and did over here and also just remove this guy we don't record these things and auth domain where you can get that auth domain for auth domain so what you can do uh, for auth domain so you have to click that on uh, authentication right so if you don't enable so first you have to just enable these things right so see as like i already explained from starting how we can using the authentication on firebase so you have to just enable this guy once you enable so you have to get it over here go to that setting part in the setting part go to that author authorized domain and this is that authorized domain so you can just use this guy or this guy whatever space you want so you can use it so i will use this guy copy this guy go back and paste it over here that's it so this settings is required for this using the virus auth, auth client so this is done now other things also required i have to use that you know local uh, blazor local storage right so for that we have to just register as extension method like add blazor local storage this is another things and then i have i already also use that custom authentication provider right and also use that authentication state provider so that also we have to just uh, registered over here 
how we can do that it's very simple again so simply i have to just use that add scope builder dot add scope and just showing over here see add scope whatever authentication state provider so see this is their authentication state provider and what is that implementation of that particular state provider this is that our custom implementation right so that we have to just edit over here so once it's done this is also done and now other another things also we have to record see the last things see there's also depend on this i account management system right so that is also implement of this custom authentication so that also uh, also we have to register so how we can do that it's very simple again we have to just create this add scope using this you know uh, lambda expression using that our you know uh, interface and what is that uh, concrete class so this is my our authentication provider actually this is dependent on that class so that we have to just register like that so this is done and then finally the last one we have to just uh, using the extension method of add authorization authorization core right because we have to use authentication authorization mechanism over here so that we have to use it so that is done now save it and build it now see build also succeed that means there is no error and all right and yeah one more thing actually i'm missing so i just adding that new login screen but it is also uh, should come if it is unauthenticated right in unauthenticated so it should be come in the login screen on the top means login button and it should be on the top right so that we can show like that if you go to the logout button go to that you know the main layout we have to just change something over here for the main layout so what i can do over here for this main layout so i just adding something over here for example uh this guy right so let me just comment it because i don't require this guy simply i'm just using this div right whatever div is previously i just same div but here i have to use this authorized view this if it is authorized view so whatever name authorization name that will be appearing over here also logout button will be appearing over here right and if it is not authorized so that time it will show is a login and registration button right these two things we have to show and that's all for now but yeah in later we have to just you know decorate whatever things actually after logged in whatever that uh, uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, whatever i you know icon or whatever that you know uh, tab user able to show so that we will to decorate over here but as of now just showing it is login is working or not so let me run it so now it is running perfectly right so see there is a no authentication on this particular things and also see everything is not authenticated right so that's why everything is looking uh visible for this user right without authentication so what i can do simple i'll show you once i click that login okay so yeah i missed something see it is fine so once i click login it is nothing appearing why close this guy go back because i implement all the functionality see functionality implement done but there's no design so that's why it is just blank so what i can do simply i have to just prepare that design so let me quickly get the design so i just prepared i have to just prepare a login screen over here so like that okay so it's a edit form and whatever that sign in model i just using prepare or sign in model i have to use it and whatever that on validate method i have to just click over here and this is nothing just whatever email whatever that password and what is if it is don't have account so you can just create a, it is will go to that register button register uh, form as well and this is that final submit button right and this is done and one more thing actually we have to show if it is any error and all so that also appearing on the top like that so that is done now let me run it and see in action now click on that login now see i am able to see this login screen right and just try to log in with this admin user first admin gmail.com and kkp and whatever my password and sign in so once you sign in now see once i sign in i'm able to see 
if i sign in so my username over there and also log out button over there that means sign in perfectly working fine now we are good to go and also i'll show you uh that f12 click on the f12 and go to that application and uh, go to that local storage click on that now see this is that way actually this is that things actually i want to show you so as the login so you are able to uh, now see whatever that you know local stores we have storing we have storing the token this is that actually token which we have to use to get that information and all and this is that provider and this is the refresh token and this is created and when it is got expired so this information we have to store this this local storage so that i can use it right so that's why i just created this you know that credential information and we can get it over here right so this is good now what i will do now i have to restrict so whatever tab like only just admin user so can uh, able to see that admin tab or if that user only just simple user logged in so simple log logged in user only can see that quiz options right so like that actually we have to check it uh, we have to restrict for over here and also we have to implement logout button so first i have to just you know stick for that over here so that only logged in user can able to see this uh, means only sir only this particular user able to see this uh, you know logged in user can able to see this tab or these options right so for that what i can do simply close that and go to that nav menu go to that nav menu and in this nav menu i have to just uh, stick over here in this nav menu uh with this decorate or also yeah the decoration over here so how we can decorate suppose for example i want to okay so this is that complete everybody can see that main home screen that is fine but quiz only can able to see uh that authorized view right so let me uh decorate over here this nav menu right so this is that name menu decorate over here and that close this guy so this is done save it so this nav menu only decorate with this guy right so this is one things and then another things uh we have to do over here suppose this questions right this question also we have to decorate because only logged in user can able to see right so this is logged in user and this is that this is that end part so we have to decorate also so now see now it's good right only logged in user can able to see these two options and without logged in user only can able to see this normal it is a demo demonstration perspective right for demo demo quiz context so that also only can they able to see so like that we have to done and one more thing actually we have to do that uh, that logged out uh, log out button so that for that log out what i can do i can just have to prepare the one logout functionality over here right so how we can just create that logout the logout we can just create a button over here that logout also should be appear after you know logged in user so that we can do that so simply i just create another div over here that is Forcefully actually log out and as of now we don't have a logout implementation but yeah will we implement and later so save it now run it and see in action so already we have the logged in because see why it is appearing because in local storage we we have that you know this option so that's why we have storing this uh, user right user information so that's why it's already logged in right so what i can do simply see if i try to delete and if i just try to refresh so it will gone and you are you are not able to log in it is not logged in right and it is showing it is try to log in and once you and also see this is way actually i want to show so if it is not logged in you are not able to see any options so logged in and just try to log in admin at the rate gmail.com and what is my password this is my password and sign in once you sign in it should be okay so this is wrong i guess so let me pass it to 
write password sign in once you sign in now quickly able to see those options right and still uh, there is some issue actually over here so now it's fine with any user can log in but they can okay so logged out is not there that is fine but yeah you still see with normal user also it is a normal user login but they are able to see all that pages so that also we have to prevent like only uh, that particular user suppose this admin user so admin user has that particular role so only they can use this section or if does not have so they don't have uh, that section right so for example let me just logged in okay so let me just uh, remove again delete from here don't worry about that as of now i'm removing from here but yeah i'll just implement the logout button as well so now see there's a no login button so login and login with that normal user so user at the rate gmail.com this is a simple user role so if it is user role sign in so once you user role sign in so also they are able to see over there right so this is that is not right actually so that we have to prevent so how we can prevent so let me close it and uh, go to that particular component for example this is quiz component right so in this quiz component what are the roles actually we have to prevent over here so for this quiz i have to show like for example i have to show this user so let me just bring back the namespace and uh, this let me keep it to our normal over here save it to go back now see like that actually you can specify multiple roles as well like so this particular quiz i just specify okay user can access admin can access and moderate can access or others also can access right so that we have to set it similar i can access for example let's quiz is find the quick question list right this question list only can access admin can access right so that what i can do simply we have to decorate from here only admin so remove this guy and also remove this guy and save it so now these two components we have covered and also question list and manage questions right so that manage questions also uh, decorate with this admin because only admin user can manage things right so let me just save it over here so now only uh, admin user can see this this two component means this two component right and apart from that user only user can see this component and if also user does not have an inform uh, role so they don't have any other component so like that actually we have to prevent right so now we have done right and what i can do i can simply uh, run this application so before run i'll just let me uh, implement that logout one also because that logout uh, again and again i'm just try to logged out from that uh, that f2l and then remove from that local storage right so this is not good so what i can do simply quickly uh, create a logout button so that i can show you so log out so this is log out and uh, in this log out what i can do i just simply edit this route as a log out and again i have to just inject it this service so this is that service and in this service what i can do just uh, uh, we have to set it some some design over here like if authorized view only we can show that you know authorize okay it is a logout or it is a you are logged in right so something like that we have to decorate over here and then what is done we have to just implement something in this code part so we have to just set it that author auth views and on initialize method let me just quickly create on initialize method override on initialize on initializing method we have to just call if it is authenticated now see this time we have to call that is authenticated method right so for example await await acc acc dot check authentication see this method we have to prepare right 
so this that's why we have to just prepare this method if it is is authenticated so let me quickly wrap it over here if it is authenticated then user can uh, log out right so that we can call as a logout button means logout method over here so that we can log out easily over here and once it's done that is done right so this is also done logout also completed so let me try to run and see in action now see this is uh, already we have a local storage that's why it's completely login right and let me try to log out now see once i log out it is log out everything is gone and also again login so this time i will log in with this admin uh, not admin i will just uh, log in with this user so this is that normal user and uh, what is my password this is my password sign in so this is wrong password so let me quickly write password sign in so once you sign in now see i'm signing that is fine but if i just click start quiz i'm able to see start quiz everything is working fine there's a no issue perfectly is working fine from the dv and all everything is working fine but once i click this you know uh, quiz list right question list click on that now you are able to see you are not authorized because this component only can able to access admin user right that user does not have a role that particular component so that's why it is not able to access so what i will do simply i just logged out so once i logged out logged in and logged in with admin user at the rate admin gmail.com and uh, this is that my password login so once you log in now i am able to see that quiz because this quiz also has an admin role and this once i click the question list now see this time question list also able to able to see this user because this user has admin role and user can thus add a new questions and also user can edit questions and user can also uh, delete questions as well so whatever things actually that user have this particular they can do that right so that is fine now last thing is pending that register so so that i can add a new uh, so i can as of now see once i click the register there's a no register button right means register form so user also able to register if it is not logged in user or it is does not have a user so user can register and once you register i will show you how we can add that roles and all right so let me close that and the last part is pending is registered things so let me quickly create a register component so where is that yeah so here let me right click on that component create a new component and i will just call this is a register component so this is the register component and in this register component i just make it as a on the top as a route so right route uh, navigation uh, component as a registration right and similar i have to just inject it again these two services which we have to register and you know, navigate here and there and one more things we have to do that over here we have to implement over here so again it's simple uh, we have to just require in a few a uh, few property for example we have to require the register model error list a sniper class and this is that you know uh, this is that not required but yeah we can keep it like for show that images and all for look and feel better so what i can do i have to just create this sign up model as well so go to that model right click on that click create a new class create a new model that is called a sign up model and in the sign up model whatever property we have to record we have to just prepare over here so these are property we have to record it over here username password and email go back and you can get it over here and then finally we have to just create a method which will just uh, create a submit method over here and in this submit method or you can just create a register method or whatever this as per convenience you can just use it we can use it and then we have to just starting we have to set that spinner right and a spinner class and then once it's done i have to just call await that act act uh, registered so yeah this is the registered and here 
whatever the register model we have to pass it as a, over here register model dot uh, first property is a email and second property is a username so that username and then third property is that uh, password right whatever new password we are trying to create it so that is done and then we have to store it as a result so let me just create it as a result and once it's done again simply we have to just uh, set it okay if it is succeed so it's go to that login page if it is fail so it is keeping keep it over here and rest of things okay this is simple logic and again uh, we don't miss that design part so here uh, what i can do i can just create a edit edit form and in this edit form be nothing over here just simply those property like username email and password and this is that login button and then this is that you know uh, register click button right and save it and we are good to go to run this application and also we can able to register so let me see uh, run it this application now this time see once i click the register now see i'm able to register uh, that new user because i don't if you don't have a new user so we can user can also register over here so for example uh test user right so test user is a first name is a test user test user at the rate gmail.com right and let me set some password so what is my password so this is my password and register so once you registered if it is registered so it is a redirect to login page and once you registered so it will redirector and let me test user at the rate gmail.com and this is my password and sign in so once you sign in now see i have sign in but it is not getting that information why so let me quickly see so see it is there i'm getting that information right so it is not logged in why something is issue so let me quickly check what is the issue so let me put the debugger point on that login button so where is my login button go to that here click that login button over here right so it is logged in once you logged in definitely it should come over here so here is come yeah here it should come get authenticated so it should come over here so why it's failing so that we have to trying to get it over here put that catch and similar we have to catch over here and put it over here right and go back and just logged in and uh, test test user at the rate gmail dot com and my password sign in go to over here so here let me check what is the issue f10 okay and now it is sign in so it is sign in successfully that's why we are getting over here that is fine this is also fine we are restoring these things and go back to over here that is also fine now once i succeed logged in this is fine go back to here and here what is we are getting over here we get the token and all that is fine and also it is succeed and what is that response we are getting in this response let me check okay this 200 also is fine this is completely fine and this is just storing the data this is also fine yeah we got that exception that means something has an issue so what is that issue okay so issue is a uh, uh, value cannot be null okay so that's this a uh, problem over here see so it is claim is fine but once i try to add you know that user role role claims so as of now role claims is empty right because does not have as a roles right so that's why it is throwing exception but yeah that we have to handle over here so that it should not be uh should not be throw the exception right 
so let me continue and go back to your application here we have to check like uh, if it is if it is not null right so how we can check it we can check it from like that uh so let me check if it is not null also not null so now i think it should fine if it is not null so definitely it should be should not be throw an error right and uh, there is another also way we can use it like we can uh, put some condition like if condition this custom attribute should not be null actually so that we can do that but yeah let, let her we do that but let me check it it is working fine or not uh, so let me let me debug again or let me just stop that application and run it again might be hot hot reload is not working properly so it is best way to close that application and run it okay so run continue and now again yeah so again same issue so that means it is not fixes over here so what i can do so yeah let me put a debugger point over here and check it what here exactly issue actually so let me refresh so if it is refresh so here go to there yeah so till now it is fine but what is this information this information user user has a uh, this guy this guy is a custom see custom is null so that is a problem so that we have to avoid because if it is null we trying to deserialize definitely it will throw an error right so what i can do in this case we can simply check one condition so let me put this condition over here if if it is not null right the not null only can do these things right so yeah this roll things so now we'll try to run this this time it should not be throw an error so now try to log in so now see this time it is logged in with the test user it is perfectly working fine because this is keeping in our way but this logged in user actually uh, this new user you have just created right but this new user does not have any uh role over there where you can check it this you can check it from that postman and as well as there you know over here as well is uh over there as well so how we can check it simply uh you have to get that token so let me take it this token from here and copy this token go back to your postman and you can just replace this token old token over here and just replace this token right and just hit that enter and see here you are able to see there is a no that attribute right this token uh, custom token attribute there is a no token custom attribute that should be appearing in this year and the last right so what i can do for that so if it is not there so what i what you have to do once you click anywhere you have to not authorize because this user does not have any roles right so that's why it is only logged in that is fine but they are not able to do anything only you can see that demo prospective things like 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 demo uh demo user right so that that you can just use it but other 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 things he can't do that so how we can allow that user so that also you can just create another things over here but um i will not recommend that part because that is could be a some risky so allow that user roles in this you know web assembly uh application because we have to expose some some you know client informations right that server information so that is not good things so so for that what you can do you can just keep it your you know authentication or uh, allow that you know role based authentication you can just have a uh keep it another application which is in your place so i'll show you where is actually i already if you not aware that so go to that my application you know um 
dot net real-world example here let me show you we are actually I just completed that part so yeah see this is actually I just completed uh, how we can use it that Firebase authentication in dot net my blazer hybrid app here user can log in register and sign out and uh, once you log in sign out user also can assign this role now see this part see, this is that one so after that you can assign that your user role using that firebase you know uh, blazor hybrid applications in the blazor so that you can also you can use it so same application i am running and this is that application so where is my application is running so yeah see this is same application running which is i am showing over here so this one i'm running over here and if you click that user list so whatever new user i just pre-created right so see this new user new user i just created but this new user does not have any roles but other user has a roles right see the admin user has a admin and user roles that user role only has a user roles and this test user does not have any roles that's why a user does not have any uh, no, uh, allow that particular section so what i can do i can easily allow that user like for example first time i allow that user user information means user role and update it so once you update it now see you are able to see this test user has a user role and once you once we have a test user user role so one what will do log out this guy log out from there okay so already is debugging point so that's why it's creating problem so remove that debugging point over here continue and now see it is log out now try to log in with test user at the rate gmail.com and what is my password this is my password and logged in now this user should able to see that quiz quiz things because now this user has a, a you know uh, allow that user role of that that particular user so that's why they are able to attempt that quit quiz component and easily they can attempt that quiz right but he is not able to attempt this admin panel because this is admin section is not able to see that so that also i will show you once i able once i allow that user for example this user only that user information right user role so let me add that two roles like user and admin update it so now this user this test user has a both user information right means a role like admin and user role so now log out this guy and log in again test user at the rate gmail dot com and let me log in now this user has all that in uh, all that component allow that access so first let me show you yeah it is perfectly working fine and once you click the question list now you can allow that new questions like this is a test questions for example this this add new questions add new options and also okay there's a duplicate so let me just unique things and yeah this is just unique things and options one is a uh, right to options add uh, questions so once you add questions you're able to see this is uh, new questions we have to just create it and also once you add it you're able to see all that options over here right so like that you can easily uh, based on that user role permission user can easily uh, access all that component so this is that complete session where we can do that you know authentication authorization with using that uh, firebase auth right and the next session we will deploy this application in our google uh, in our google firestore right so that is also free if you don't know how we can deploy and all so you can go to the my firebase or just you know uh firebase yeah this firebase go check out that firebase where you can get it that you know how we can deploy that you know see how we can hosting our application in firebase firebase google firebase that is also completely free for that initial level so you can just check out that session but yeah in upcoming session uh, we will deploy this complete authentication authorization with firebase db will deploy on here and one more things we have to do that 
that be up to so now see as of now whatever logged in user so any logged in user can able to see all that questions right so that is also should not be happen because whatever that uh, uh, whatever that uh, see this uh, real time db right so that also be up to the stick over here as of now anybody anybody can see anybody can access those you know data like if it is logged in user and not logged in user anybody can log in and uh, authenticate or uh, anybody can use this data but that also we have to restrict using that rules like see as of now the rules we have to set is true means everybody can do that but yeah in upcoming session also we have to uh, set that you know restriction of the rules like only that logged in user whatever that logged in user that can only access that read and write access and uh, you know something like that actually we have to do in upcoming session so till now thank you have a nice day and don't forget to like subscribe and share